Welcome to Modern Animism, a holistic spiritual path. I'm your host, Laura Giles from Pan Society, and we are here to help make modern animism more accessible. If you have any questions that can help us do that, please let us know, and thanks for tuning in. Did you know animism is a natural path? Well, we believe that everything is connected. We look to nature for how to live and how to heal. And on today's show, we're going to be talking with Danny Williamson, the author of Wild and Well. And that's what she's going to be sharing with us. So she'll talk about how to regain or maintain your health naturally and holistically. But before we get into the thick of it, let's take a breather and get grounded. Let's give gratitude to the ancestors and the elements. Acknowledge and thank the element of earth for our bodies, home, food, clothes, and all the things that allows us to survive. Thanks for keeping us rooted and giving us a way to find our footing. Acknowledge and thank the element of air for all of the ability to think create new ideas, inspire, be inspired, and the conversation that gives us a way to connect. I acknowledge and thank the element of fire for our power, desire, and the responsibility that keeps things in check. Thank you for our passion that allows us to create and destroy so that we can keep things moving and never be boring. I acknowledge the element of water and thank you, water, for all that is mysterious, intuitive, and deep for bringing the unknown to light so that we can continue to learn about ourselves, each other, and the spirit world. I acknowledge and thank our loving, helping ancestors from the human, plant, animal, and mineral kingdoms, and thank you for all the help that we receive that is seen and unseen. And thank you to our listening community for being here today. I appreciate your support, as always, and donations. And if you'd like to contribute to our mission, you can do that at our website at pansociety.net. And if you'd like to help and our cash strapped, please consider reviewing us on iTunes or subscribing to our YouTube channel. And thank you to everybody who's already done that. So as I said, today we're with Danny Williamson, the author of Wild and Well. And Danny believes that God designed our bodies to heal themselves. We simply must give our bodies what they need. And she completely reversed 24 years of chronic lifestyle diseases by healing her gut and building her immune system. And so I can't wait to hear about that. Welcome, Danny. Thank you so much, Laura. Thank you for being here. That was beautiful, that opening. Oh, thanks. Or, thanks. Yes. Yes. So, um, as I said, you uh, completely reversed 24 years of illness, and I would love to start with that. Can you tell us that story? Sure. I grew up in complete chaos in my house. There was some... Um, sexual abuse, physical abuse, lots of chaos. My grandfather had died by suicide. My mother attempted suicide multiple times. I had chronic diarrhea for years and had my very first colonoscopy at age 20. From 20 to 15, 15 years later, I was in a, in a hard marriage, difficult marriage, two little children, and I was struggling with suicidal thoughts. And I remember the day that I was going to end my life. And I knew exactly what I was going to do that day, drive off the foot of Broadway into the Ohio River. And I'm laying there that morning, and I hear my kids busting through the door. They were four and five, five and six, Jackson and Ella at that time. And, Mama, Mama, get up, get up. Let's eat, let's eat. You know, what's for breakfast? All the stuff in the morning. And I looked at those kids. And I looked in their eyes, and I just immediately knew that there was no way I was going to leave those children I was with my husband at the time, Greg. And um, I got up, and I fed the kids. I didn't know what I was going to do. And a year later, I found myself divorced, single mom, two, um, um, two little children on food stamps and a medical card. I was still struggling with irritable bowel syndrome. I'd been diagnosed with lupus. I had chronic itching and I was depressed and it was a real uncertain time for me and I decided to go to nursing school. <laughs> so I, um, I applied to nursing school and one day I get two letters in the mail. I get one that says, congratulations, you're, you've been accepted to Vanderbilt Nurse Practitioner Program. Second letter was, you're receiving 56 more dollars in food stamps this month for you and your children. And so three years later, really, I've, I'm like two hundred thousand dollars in debt, still wow. very sick. That well, yeah, to 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 Vandy, and still struggling with all the symptoms. I'd had another colonoscopy, endoscopy, lots of procedures, lots of doctors. Twenty four years, ten doctors before a doctor ever looked me square in the eye 
a year, or I'm sorry, six months after graduating nurse practitioner school and said, Danny, what are you eating? Don't you know your diet controls your disease? He said, do you take digestive enzymes and probiotics, and do you know your food sensitivities? It turned the entire trajectory around for my life and my patients' lives and my children's lives. And I've spent the last 11 years healing my body, complete, re complete reversal of autoimmune disease, all the chronic lifestyle diseases simply by, not so simply actually, by healing the gut and decreasing inflammation in my body. And that's what I've done with thousands of patients the last decade. The exact same thing, working from the inside out, healing the gut, which is 80% of our immune system. And, you know, I grew up in, 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 in the situation that I did not knowing anything about adverse childhood experiences and mm -hmm. how the first 18 years of your life can set you up for a world of chronic disease, addiction, suicide, shortened lifespan. I have an adverse childhood experience score of six. I should already be pretty close to death, a, 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 a you know, addicted to drugs, multiple autoimmune diseases, but I'm not, but I'm, you know, and so I... I, you can never negate the power of your childhood and what happens to you before, like I said, the age of 18. And the ACE questionnaire is a big part of my practice. So that's what I've done. That's how I treat my patients. Very common sense, practical medicine. Garbage in equals garbage out. What's at the end of your fork is way more powerful than what's at the bottom of your pill bottle. And we start with that, with eating clean, one ingredient, whole food, and reversing damage. You know, I'm a big believer. If you weren't born sick, you don't have to be sick. We turn mm -hmm. these things on through decades of dysfunction. So that's what we do, rolling back age. You know, I tell people all the time, you're, you're, you're aging backwards. You're Benjamin Buttons over here. You know, you're just... <laughs> Getting your health back, and that's amazing. God wants us to be 100%, and it doesn't take much for our, our body wants to right ship, doesn't it? it? It wants to be healthy, and when you give it what it needs, it's unbelievable. You can't stop it. So I'm glad you so. started with the with the childhood and all the um, trauma and stuff. So I'm a trauma therapist, and one of the first things I do is talk about lifestyle issues like sleep and meditation and food. And I get the whole mental eye roll thing. And you're not a doctor, so I, and people just tune me out. And I'm wondering if you if you have the same problem with getting people to connect trauma with recovery and gut health, or how do you deal with that so that you don't have that problem? Well, I, I really don't have any trouble with it because, well, number one, they're not coming in for trauma therapy, but when they realize, once I give them the ACE questionnaire, because now I spent the first nine years not doing that, almost a decade, because I wasn't taught about adverse childhood experiences and your body keeps the score, right? I mean, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. give them questionnaires now, or the questionnaire, I'm sorry, and we start talking about that they don't roll their eyes because they're horrified. Many break down. And, you know, I have a lot of depressed patients, a lot of anxiety-ridden patients, patients who have attempted to die by suicide. And just autoimmune, mainly the bulk of my practice is autoimmune. So I really don't get much pushback. What I get, because people who come see me, are very sick most of the time, or they just have spent decades like I did with one doctor after another pushing a pill. So they are mm -hmm. ready. They're ready and open to listen to whatever it is I have to say, and they are used to me being out there. So um, <laughs> they, they are grateful. So I really haven't had that. I get more curiosity. So then I give them the book, The Deepest Well, or I give them to ask them to order the book, The Deepest Well by... Dr. Nadine Burke Harris, one of my favorite books, or The Body Keeps Score by Dr. Vander mm -hmm. Van Kalk. Vander Kalk? Yes, I think so. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they are fascinated. And just some people break down crying and say, oh my gosh, you know, Danny, I never, many people have never been asked 
you know, were you molested? Because I also deal with a lot of um, sex drive issues and low sex drive, mm -hmm. right? Well, mm -hmm. I was never taught, ask them, were you raped? Were you molested? I mean, and come to find out, as you know, many of these women were, and men, but mainly mm -hmm. women. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a huge piece of medicine, Laura, that we're missing. The trauma. Yeah. <laughs> Good trauma, and I'm angry about it. I spent two, yeah, two hundred thousand. I think I said three hundred, two hundred thousand dollars in student loans to Vanderbilt, and never once were were we taught. Number one, your body's designed to heal itself. Your diet is key. Number two, your patient's childhood may be driving their chronic disease. You mm -hmm. need to learn about ACEs or trauma or, uh, you know, adrenal dysfunction, all of that, never once, not one time. I'm so mad about it, but I've learned it now as an old lady. You know, I was 40 when I went back to school, so I was one of the oldest ones in my class, and, and I feel like I have no time to waste. I have to get this out there now. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, you know as a trauma therapist, I mean, this is hard work. I've done EMDR work personally myself. I've, I've mm -hmm. gone which is a, um, it, you know, not inpatient, but you do check yourself in and you're there for a week and of experiential therapy and treatment and 12 hours a day, you know, counseling and hard, hardcore work. I mean, this is mm -hmm. hard work to overcome childhood trauma. Yeah. And where we But it can happen. Hmm? It can happen. Oh, yes, it can happen. So mm -hmm. now... I, I sit on the board now for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention and because suicide is near and dear to my heart. And, again, mm -hmm. my whole family has been riddled with suicidal thoughts or actual suicide. And do you know that phone calls the past year to suicide crisis lines have gone up 800%? Oh, my God. Why, mm. why phone calls to domestic violence lines have gone down drastically. Why is that? Well, for the for a year, the abuser was locked in the house, basically. I mean, I'm sorry, the, the person being abused was locked in the house with their abuser. They couldn't make phone calls. So just imagine what these children are, have gone through that are in abuse, that actually were able maybe to get out and go to school and all these things, and now they're, they've been locked in the home with an abuser. Yeah, it's, it's that's a good perfect. point. We have a whole mental health crisis happening as we speak right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pandemic. Can you share an example of, of one of these, the sickest of the sick, and how they got back onto the road to health? What does that look like? Oh, my word! Yes, well, we have... <laughs> And hundreds of, of, of testimonies like that. And, you know, I tell you what, I had a woman who's, she was like in her 60s, and Hashimoto's thyroiditis is one of the big uh, parts of my practice, which is an autoimmune condition of the thyroid. And she came to me um, about that. But she literally, no, she's not in her 60s. She's in her 50s. She literally had been almost bedridden. For the, for the last two years, I was on every medicine known to man. I have two that are standing out in my mind over this one, real real similar. I mean, every painkiller, every um, antidepressant, anti-anxiety, benzodiazepine, you name it, on it. They had never been asked about their diet. They came to me. We did food sensitivity testing. My intake is an hour and a half. So fast, fast forward. I learned about their diet, their sleep, their exercise, their pooping their stress, their community. Do you have community? Those are my six steps to healing there. We did food sensitivity testing on them. I cut out the top seven foods in their diet. I mean, I'm sorry, seven inflammatory foods, gluten, dairy, soy, corn, sugar, eggs, peanuts. Got them on some gut healing supplements. Got their thyroids working right, their hormones balanced. These were women who were menopausal women. Got their adrenals working, and they are different women. I, literally, 
both of them believe that we saved their lives. They tell me this every time. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but I know how sick they were when they came in. Mm -hmm. They have got back, but it has taken years. I have seen both of them for at least four or five years, and um, I saw one of them just real recently. She lives in Alabama, and she drives up, and she said, Danny, I could have never finished my PhD. She's finished her PhD. She's bought, I mean, she's, she's worked. She's, she said, had I not listened to you. So I can do all the work, you know, like at, tell you what needs to be done, but you're in control of what's right. at the end of the fork. Both, of, right. these women, both of these women controlled what they put on their fork. And it's not mm-hmm. about, uh, it's not about, uh, oh, what am I trying to say? doing without or, you know, restriction, that's not it at all. It's about all the other foods that you can eat that we don't normally eat. We are so used to eating packaged, processed, bagged, canned, fake, man-made food. We don't even know what a beautiful artichoke tastes like, right? Just one (laughs) ingredient food. And we feed our kids the same five or six meals their entire life. You know, they're Mm -hmm. not getting so. These two women, they they are, both of them are married, and their husbands, one of them, the husband comes to every visit, and they are so grateful. Like, I mean, one of them, he told me, Charlie told me, he said, you know, you've given me my wife back, which is humbling, and I appreciate that, but she did the hard work. Mm-hmm. And it's also, you know this, as a trauma specialist, if you don't have the family on board with your healing, it's very difficult to heal. Very I hear difficult. that all the time. You bet. Do you have any, so, um, do you have any tips for people who are that, that's their situation? Well, my number one probably would be bring that partner to your very first visit when you come to a, a provider like me, right, who's mm-hmm. going to lay out for an hour and a half, two hours. This is you know, this is the um, anti-inflammatory diet I need you to eat. These are the th- These are the reasons gluten is so inflammatory in your body. This is the reason dairy punches holes in your gut. Here's the reason eggs are the number two food allergy in the United States. Most people don't know that for children. And so I, I get into the entire all six steps, the sleeping, the cooking. But the cooking's the biggest thing. If you don't cook at home, you cannot heal your body very well. I and agree. You know, yeah. People eat out, like something like 60% of the people eat out four meals a week. What? That's unbelievable. <laughs> and, and they eat, and they eat, they just, they don't meal prep. So I just talk to them, you know, one way to get them on board is, you know, you, you cheat when you're not prepared. And I can tell you right now, I don't cheat with salmon and broccoli. That's what I tell them. I cheat with, <laughs> excuse me, whatever is the closest in the kitchen, right? And it's never salmon and broccoli. Uh, so really bringing them to the visit and keeping it. But then again, if they won't come, because a lot of times they'll say, oh, yeah, you're going to your witch doctor, Danny. You know, right. yes. it drives me nuts. And, and, and I look at them and I say, look, I'm not recreating the will here. Daniel did this 2,000 years ago in the Bible before I did. I mean, my Lord, I'm good, but I'm not Daniel. Daniel stood right there with his warriors in the Bible and said, we're not eating that. We are not eating the food of the king's palace. Feed us full and water, which is vegetables and water, for 10 days. Well, guess who came out the strongest warriors? Daniel's people. So I'm not, this is not new news. Now, I'm not vegetarian or vegan, but the whole basis of that whole story is, Your body's a temple, Mm -hmm. and what you will heal you or kill you. So, you know, and if they won't come, if they won't get on board, I just look straight at that person, whether it's a man or a woman, and say, well, I hate to tell you this, but you're going to have to do this solo, and hopefully, to goodness, you can put podcasts on the TV. You know, you can put me on there. I do a podcast, a health show every Sunday night. Put me up on your TV where I'm talking nonstop, anything, just share audio books, whatever, all over the house, maybe they'll pick up on something. And then you have to take care of yourself because you need to put your oxygen mask on first if you want to live the life we're designed to live. It's hard. I think people you know? do. I think, 
I think people do need to hear it over and over again and from different sources because this is not mainstream stuff. And a lot of people that I talk to think that their digestion is fine, and it's not. So could you tell us, like, how for those kinds of people who think, oh, I don't have any stomach problems, I can eat whatever I want, how would they know that they actually do have some digestive problems? Like, what are the symptoms? Brain fog, fatigue, insomnia, migraine headaches, joint pain, uh, depression, anxiety, ADD. ADHD, OCD, that's a big one, uh, decreased libido, right? Of course, bloating, gas, diarrhea, constipation, heartburn. I mean, the hundreds upon hundreds of symptoms of food sensitivities and food allergies, yeah. not just the gut. And I hear that all the time. Well, I don't have any problem. Well, are you tired? Are you foggy-headed? Does your, do you have migraines? People never connect it. This is neurologist. Never connect it. I get the referrals from the neurologist when everything else has failed, right? The Botox right. and mm-hmm. the, the, the Imitrex, all the things. Then they say, well, I don't know, maybe it's something you're eating. Well, heck, yeah, it's something you're eating. It's not. <laughs> at the time, it's something you're eating. Now, it could be hormones also, and it can be barometric pressure. So I know that. But oftentimes, it's what, what's going down the pie hole, Laura. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, they're every symptom known to man, yes, 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 can be attributed to leaky gut, bad diet. But people don't understand it. They think it's just, well, I don't, if I don't have diarrhea, my stomach doesn't hurt. I'm fine. Right. We don't realize how bad off you were until you start to feel better. Mm-hmm. And you're like, what the heck? I slept all night. I'm waking up feeling refreshed. My joint pain is gone. For me, the lupus and the food sensitivities were in my hands. My lupus settled in my hands, not anywhere else, it, not on my skin. Or, oh, oh, here's another one. Acne, rosacea, dermatitis, eczema, psoriasis, itching skin. That's 100% food sensitivities, food allergies, until proven differently. What's going on in the gut is going to ha- come out on the largest organ of the body, the skin. And I itched for 10 years. Two, der- two dermatologists, lots of steroids. Nobody ever connected the gut and the skin. Shame on us. Shame right. on us. It's you crazy. Know, I wasn't taught this in school, but I had a mentor who, who wasn't either. He was a family practice doctor, and he stepped out of the boat 20-plus years ago and said, we're not helping people. We've got to figure out what the root cause is to this patient's anxiety. Well, you know this, 80 to 90% of all serotonin is in the small intestine. It's not okay. in the brain. So mm-hmm. when the gut changed, guess what else is? Anxiety, depression, bipolar, schizophrenia, ADD, ADHD, the list goes on and on. You heal the gut, you heal the brain. Mm-hmm. So another thing that I get is that people tell me that they do eat healthy. Oh, that's not a problem. I eat healthy foods. And then when I ask them what they are eating, and then it's just like, oh, my God, you call that healthy food. Um, so there are people who don't actually know what healthy food is. So what is your definition of that? My definition of healthy food, true healthy food, is one ingredient, God-made food. I'm talking a piece of chicken, salmon, a piece of por- a pork chop, one, you know, not fried up. I'm talking one ingredient food, um, apples, oranges, you know, your fruits, your vegetables, your nuts, your seeds, your olive oils, your avocado oils, your meat, fish, chicken, lamb, pork, turkey, beef, buffalo, all that. That's one ingredient. I'm a big believer in a Mediterranean lifestyle. I know for a fact that that's the bulk of, that's the lifestyle the bulk of the world eats, which is going to be fresh, one ingredient food that you have mixed together beautifully in a recipe or what have you with beautiful spices, incredible oils. We do not use enough spice in this country. You walk in, when I was in Indonesia, you walk into a store or a restaurant and you just smell the unbelievable spices and herbs and, you know, all this just great combination of things. Here you don't, I mean, you don't smell anything. You smell bleach when you walk in. (laughs) Or or sterile. Um, That's that's one ingredient food. Now, 
if I tell people, if you look in your cabinets, your cupboards, your freezers, your refrigerator, and your food would still be there in six months, then that's not food. That's Franken food. If it's in a box, yeah. a bag, a can, the majority of your food, right? I'm not, I mean, there are times, I ate a gluten-free cracker this morning. I mean, that came out of a box. But it was a clean cracker. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't loaded with soy oil, bean oil, and all that stuff in it. So you can find clean food in packages, but it's very rare. And yeah. so you have to use that as a treat. And not as your, like I have patients, they'll, they'll say, well, yeah, I found these gluten-free <laughs> waffles, Danny. Well, good morning. <laughs> okay, that's fine. But have you turned around and looked at the back of that gluten-free waffle? That's still fake food. It may be gluten-free, mm -hmm. but they got to put a lot of other crap in it to make it taste good. Gluten-free with, you know, and soft and all that stuff. So, so I want patients eating gluten-free food, not products, and real food not packaged products. I'm sitting here looking at my kitchen right now. There's tomato, a cucumber, a squash, what's up there, peppers, garlic. That's, that's real food. Mm -hmm. But it's hard. And, you, to, and, and see, okay, last year, I know, Laura, I'm interrupting. I'm sorry, but i got one thing to say. We had I just shared this on Instagram last week, and it got a tremendous amount of, of, of comments, some not so good. And the title was, you've had 18 months to clean up your diet, to decrease inflammation. What did you do in those 18 months? Did you choose to go to comfort food, which is exactly what happened with a lot mm -hmm. of people? Mm -hmm. And did you gain 25 pounds during COVID? Or did you learn how to cook when we were stuck at home? Did you learn a couple of more recipes, right? Did you take the time? The shelves were sold out, sold out of processed foods at the grocery but there was fruit. There were fruit and vegetables still on the shelves. That should mm -hmm. tell you where headspace is. So, do you have? Uh, you talked about the smells as you walk into restaurants and stores. Do you have any um, herbs that you love? Oh my gosh, I love turmeric, curcumin. You know, it's anti-inflammatory. It helps with joint pain. It gets all over everything, though. It's messy as anything. The Indians use turmeric like crazy and curry. I had a great curry yesterday. I didn't make this curry, but, oh, my Lord, the curry is so beautiful and orange. Uh, ginger, I love ginger. I use a tremendous amount of basil because basil is easy to grow, so I grow that all yeah. over the place. Mm -hmm. I put basil in like everything. Rosemary, I love rosemary. Rosemary is loaded with antioxidants. I love now, this is not an herb, but it's a, it, a onions because onions are loaded with quercetin. Quercetin is one of the big ones this past year to help decrease the inflammatory response and build up your immune system. So I use a lot of onions. But I like all spices. Like I spice things up. And people don't realize that your spices only last about 18 months in your cabinet. That's it. Mm -hmm. Well, do you mm -hmm. know, I just, my mom has Alzheimer's, and I just cleaned out her kitchen cabinet. There were spices in there from decades ago. <laughs> decades. How often do you use allspice, right? Not much or a little bit. Right, I yeah. When you open your spices, they should smell incredible. They should be. Yeah. And spices are not expensive. Throw your spices out. Go. I have a friend who owns a spice store here in, in Nashville, and so I go to her spice shop and get just what I need, small amounts. Because, you know, again, how, cinnamon. I use a lot of cinnamon. Cinnamon's anti-inflammatory. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll put cinnamon in, in my coffee and cinnamon in, um, you know, lots of things. So I just use a whole lot, but probably turmeric. I love turmeric and ginger and garlic. I mean, garlic, good Lord. Garlic's great and anti-inflammatory. Well, what about... Um uh, contamination with uh, spices. I'm talking about like stuff from China, you know, heavy metals, that kind of thing. You bet. So I don't have anything in my cabinet that I can help that is not an organic spice. Yeah. Again, yeah. my good friend Holly owns the Savory Spice Shop, um, two, two of them here in Nashville and Franklin, and that actually is a franchise. So those are clean, tested organic, gluten-free spices right there. So you mm -hmm. do have to be careful. You have to be real mm -hmm. careful with that. So I've, my mom, I grew up with straight-up McCormick, 
And I'm, it's funny because yeah. I saved a lot of her spice thing because it's funny. It's from the 80s, some of this stuff. And I'm laughing <laughs> at some of it. I'm like, oh, my gosh, yellow food coloring, which are not spices, but, you know, food colorings too. Yeah. Um, and McCormick, <laughs> I don't know. And I'm not ba- bashing McCormick over here. Don't send me dirty letters if you're on the board for McCormick spices. But, um, you know, you, it, you have to be careful. You have to be real yeah. careful with spices as you do your food. But I tell patients every day, look, you can eat clean, you can eat organic as best you can, very inexpensively. You shop off of yeah. the Dirty Dozen, the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15, the top 15 foods that are the cleanest in the country that are not organic, and then the top dozen that are the dirtiest in the country that have more pesticides on them than anything. It's called the Dirty Dozen, and that's from Environmental Working Group. You can download that. It changes every year for free. Strawberries, spinach, grapes, and apples are always at the very top of the Dirty Dozen. Mm-hmm. So I mm-hmm. tell people, you all these. You can go to Walmart. In fact, I have a whole series coming out tonight on Walmart um, and organic foods at Walmart and clean foods. You can, you can, and your farmer's market. There's your best place right there. Most yeah. of those farmers at farmer's markets do not use a tremendous amount of p- pesticides and herbicides. Most of them are not certified organic because they can't afford it. They're small farmers. Yeah. It costs $100 or something crazy to have the green symbol. But, but you can ask them, do you use glyphosate, right? Do you use Roundup? And then if they say yes, well, scoot on to the next farmer. But I am mm-hmm. a big knowing your farmer and shopping locally and eating in season in season i agree so what about supplements you mentioned probiotics and digestive enzymes um any others besides that and and any particular probiotics and digestive enzymes well no particular probiotic because we have hundreds of billions of trillions of bacteria in our gut right more bacteria than what there are stars in the Milky Way. That's what we discovered in 2013 or so from the National Institute of Health. I rotate our probiotics. Every three to six months, we switch up brands and strains and strands because we have bacteria that are just in the vagina, that the vagina likes, that the lungs love that the heart loves, that the prostate loves. So we rotate our probiotics, that um, bacteria that help kill candida, bacteria like bifidobacteria breva 8, that helps with weight loss. People love that. Um, not necessarily that you're going to lose weight if you take it because you've got to change everything else also. But So I rotate probiotics. I use a lot of spore-based probiotics. I use uh, master supplements. I mean, we have a lot. In, in pure disclosure, I own a supplement store as well that is separate from my medical practice. But I was so tired of patients coming in with supplements from Amazon that were old or not mm-hmm. uh, nearly as effective as they needed to be. So I have a supplement store. So digestive enzymes, absolutely. Now here I'm going to tell you, and you can tell this to your patients, you won't need a digestive enzyme most of the time if you actually chew your food, for crying out loud. Chew mm-hmm. your food. <laughs> Bloat, gas, gurgle, all this mess going on in there and like constantly belching. Those are people who don't chew their food. They get that undigested food that goes from the stomach to the small intestine, creating a leaky gut and the gurgling and all that. Now, digestive enzymes help break down fat protein, and carbohydrates. That's what a digestive enzyme does. Breaks down the big pieces of food. I do take, I took two digestive enzymes yesterday when I ate at this Thai restaurant. And I knew I was eating gluten-free, but I, but I had chicken involved in it. And I thought, well, I just, I'm going to take it because I don't know. There could be cross-contamination here. So I'm a big believer in enzymes and probiotics. Yes, I think for me, with my patients, I tell people, I believe people need four things for sure the best multivitamin money can buy, a probiotic, a fish oil to decrease inflammation, joint pain, brain health, Alzheimer's, all of that, and vitamin D3. Those Mm -hmm. are four cornerstones. Now, everyone's different. There may be somebody with a condition that can't take fish oil. I mean, you know, so you have to talk to your doctor about this or your nurse. 
But I think those four things right there will fix a world of hurt. If you accompany that with a clean diet and sleeping well at night and pooping well and decreasing stress and exercising, some people need a lot of magnesium. What you do for a living, 80% 80 of depressed patients have a magnesium deficiency. So Mm -hmm. magnesium is one of the greatest smooth muscle relaxer minerals you've ever taken in your life. If you have headaches, can't sleep, can't poop, restless legs, I mean, um, anxiety, depression, magnesium may be a magic bullet for you. So some people mm-hmm. need magnesium. It's all different things. I mean, good Lord, i got a gazillion products in there. But those four, <laughs> basics, those four basics, I think most people in the United States could benefit from. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about poop. Uh, I'm not sure why that's not more of a thing these days. It's crazy, but, you know, when I was growing up, the and I wasn't feeling well, one of the first things my mom would always ask me is about my poop. And when I do that, when, you know, people are like, I'm here for trauma therapy. Why are you asking me about poop? <laughs> you know, but it's important. Um, I, I don't, and, and same with the food. Oh, I'm eating healthy. No, you're not. I will ask them about that. And it was like, oh, that's not a problem. And then I ask them how, how regular they go. And then, you know, they're really not regular. So what does regular look like and why is poop important? <laughs> Regular looks like your dog. Your dog will eat and go and poop like 20 minutes later. Yeah. That, mm-hmm. And they're thrilled about it, too. The dog runs mm-hmm. back in as fast as they can if they poop. That's a healthy human gut as well. Most people are not pooping two or three times a day. Some people are right. only pooping once or twice a week, right? So mm-hmm. what you eat should be completely eliminated by tomorrow. One hundred percent. A good health. It's one big tube from the mouth to the anus. One tube. So it's extremely important to poop, and it's extremely important to poop. If you look at the Bristol stool chart, a number four on the Bristol stool chart would be a great poop. That's long and you know curled up and all that stuff, not cracked. So what about pooping, Danny? I've never pooped. I don't poop. My doctor says it's fine to poop once a week. No. Anxiety. Think about what poop is. Think about that big tube. It's only one cell wall thick. If you are backed up in there, those toxins get reabsorbed. Think about how toxic you are, how thick you are, how sluggish you are. I mean, everyone knows how great it feels to have a great poop. That's one thing. Of course, you know I grew up with chronic diarrhea, so I have never had a problem with pooping. Now I don't have diarrhea, but I am a good pooper, even having gone through uh, menopause. But I also take my probiotics. I do take magnesium. I chew my food. I know my food sensitivities. It's extremely important to poop. And you need to look at your poop. People don't look at their poop. Good poopers, they hate automatic flushers. (laughs) <laughs> if you happen to poop in public and your poop has gone down before you even get up, I mean, it's real irritating to those of us that are good poopers because we want to look at our poop. You need to look at your poop. You need to look at your kid's poop. You need to see, oh, my gosh, is it green? Is it yellow? Is it is it floating? Is it not floating? You know, is it, you know, is it full of fibers? You should be chewing your food so you don't see your food in your poop. Mm-hmm. Well, that tells not absorbing your nutrients. Yeah, yeah. so it's my, it's my third step. Eat well, sleep well, move well, poop well. It's my fourth step to healing um, is we've got to get you pooping. And if you're not moving well, most likely you're not going to poop well because when you yeah. stop moving, you stop moving. My friend who's a chiropractor, Dr. Meyer, says that, and he's talking about your body stops moving, and that's true. But you also, your bowels stop moving. Mm-hmm. Don't mm-hmm. poop. And we, we're chronically dehydrated. I weigh yeah. 130 pounds. I need a minimum of 65 ounces of water a day. Because I drink coffee in the morning, I have to add another 8 to 10 ounces on top of that. If I sweat, then there's another 8 to 10 ounces. We are a country and probably a world of chronic dehydrated people. If people would just drink good water enough to hydration, do you know how many chronic diseases we would start to turn around? Mm -hmm. So where do we get good water? 
Oh, my gosh. Well, not <laughs> from your plastic, even though it says non-BMA or non-BPA. Um, if it's non-BPA, it's made with some other chemical to make it non-BPA. So always think about that. You know, clean water. Clean water is key. I grew up with toxic uh, Western Kentucky c- chemical plants dumping in the river water. So... I have a whole house water filter. Now, that it took mm-hmm. me until I was 53 years old to be able to afford that. So I realized that not everybody can have a whole house filter, but most people can afford a Brita, even a Brita filter. You know, people poo-poo that. No, that's, that's a good filter. Is it going to filter out everything? Absolutely not. But so you also can find out about your water from your water company. You know, find out what's in it. People don't do that. They don't look online and see what's in their water. We have birth control pills in our water, Xanax mm-hmm. in our water, antidepressants mm-hmm. in our water. You know, too bad we don't have lithium in our water anymore. Lithium, the countries, well, the countries, I'm sure, but the ca- the states, the counties, the cities that have lithium added to their water, guess what? Less homicide, less suicide, less violent crime. Lithium's one of my favorites, by the way. I love lithium, <laughs> low-dose lithium, just tiny low dose, not necessarily prescription, low-dose. So, I don't know. I drink my water out of a glass uh, mason jar, a great big quart mason jar. I also have a 64-ounce glass jug I fill up in the very beginning of the morning with, with when I start seeing patients, and I try to have that finished by lunch. Now, I don't always do it. Some days I rock right through it. Other days I don't. But it has to be a visual right mm-hmm. there. And we have to at my office, so I fill it up. And I, and I don't drive around with glass all the time. Stainless steel is fine as well. But I, I, I prefer glass over everything. But if you live in a town with, with bad water, you know, it, it, that's tricky. It's real tricky. Yeah. yeah. And I worry I about water. Need- like I, would you think? Go ahead. I, well, I drive up to gas stations and all these places, and there's pallets of water sitting outside, you know, in between the tanks and all this. Well, number one, you're soaking up all the toxins from the gasoline out there. But I, right. water that sits outside on pallets, oh, for crying out loud, hot, cold, hot, cold. You're leaching every endocrine disruptor known to man into that bottle of of water that hasn't been climate controlled. So. I really am picky about my water. I do the best Me I can, too. but when I go up, to, when I go up to Kentucky, uh, where my where I'm from, and my mom is there now, and my, you know nobody has a water filter, so I bring in Fiji mm. water, Fiji, and it's in plastic. So I, I it's some, sometimes you have to weigh the risks and the benefits. Fiji water, if you're going to drink bottled water, Fiji has more silica in it than any other water out there. Well, what silica do? Well, number one, it helps pull mercury out of the brain. That's a huge one. Alzheimer's disease is on the rise. So mercury and Alzheimer's disease, we know there's a correlation with. But um, Fiji water, has silica helps with skin, with bones, with, you know, nails and hair and all of that. So I'm a big fan of Fiji. But, again, it's in plastic. So, so um, thyroid issues are a lot of things that often get missed as well. Um, do you have any, do you have any, does that pop up with you that, you know, somebody has been in care for all these years, they come to you and you'd be like, oh, it's thyroid. And how would a person know? I have patients that come to me who have seen doctors for decades after decades after decades and never been diagnosed properly with, say, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is the number one undiagnosed autoimmune disease in the United States. So most of my patients that come in that are thyroid, already on thyroid medicine or thyroid patients, they usually get one lab checked, which is a thyroid stimulating hormone, a TSH, and their doctor says it's just fine if it's four or five. Well, it's not. They've never checked the yeah. other hormones that need to be checked, right, a free T3, a free T4, thyroid antibodies, things like that. Symptoms of slug it so Thyroid and depression and anxiety, they go hand in hand, right? So a hypothyroid, a sluggish thyroid, your symptoms are fatigue, depression, weight gain, foggy-headedness, insomnia, can't poop, 
high cholesterol, chronic miscarriages, hair falling out, nails brittle, outer third of the eyelashes falling out, joint pain. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And many people, like like you said, I mean, they, they have no idea they have a thyroid condition. And mm-hmm. children, or, you know, and, and yeah, it's sad to me that a lot of children also don't get their, their thyroid checked. I've had a, a tremendous amount of child uh, pediatric patients through the years who were hypothyroid and their pediatricians were just leaving them alone, not doing anything. Mm-hmm. Well, nobody wants to start thyroid medicine, and we try not to do that at first. We try to heal the gut and take supplements that will help boost the thyroid. But your thyroid is the master gland in our body, the master. You can't live without it. If it's cut out of you because of thyroid cancer or nodules, you will die if you do not take thyroid medicine. You cannot live without your thyroid. It controls your weight loss, your weight gain. And, and we, we treat it like it's nothing. It is the master yeah. gland. If your thyroid's not working right, your sex hormones are not right, your adrenal glands are not right, nothing is right. It's shocking. I know. <laughs> it's, it's, so, and it's ma- so, uh, why do you think women are more at risk for autoimmune issues than men? Oh, my gosh. Well, I can tell you exactly now why they're <laughs> more. We are 8 to 10. This is, this, you're speaking my, you're, you're answering my, <laughs> asking the things I love right now. Then. Um, women are 8 to 10, to 8 to 10 times more susceptible to autoimmune disease. 8 to 10 times more than men. We are the most toxic, Laura. We're the ones who use the toxic lotion, makeup, hair color, lipstick, yeah. nail polish, yeah. nail polish remover, shampoo, conditioner, deodorant, perfume. What about toxic tampons and pads? We are the most toxic. I spent 35 years putting Roundup and bleach in my vagina, and I had no idea that cotton was the number one most toxic crop out there. It has more glyphosate Roundup on it than almost any other crop. Then we take your Roundup Ready cotton and your tampon, and we bleach it with Clorox bleach to make it white. And then we stick it in the most vascular organ in the body, the vagina. And what you put in your vagina, just like your skin, is through your bloodstream immediately. So, So we've got cramps, horrible clots, endometriosis, PCOS, I mean, every problem known to man from toxic tampons and pads. Here's that, that, there's the reason women have more autoimmune disease. And then you throw the hormones on top of it, right? The imbalanced hormones that happen from all of the endocrine disruptors that we're putting on and in our body. Yeah, it's fun. Um, and I spent 24 years not knowing any of this about my body that the lotion I put on my body could be destroying my immune system, that the makeup Mm -hmm. I put on my body could be creating systemic inflammation in my body. Mm Yeah. 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 So tell us about your book. What's in your book? Oh, what'd you say? I'm sorry. You got me fired up about women. (laughs) (laughs) I'm fired up too. (laughs) I want to hear about what's in your book. Oh, my book, Wild and Well, Danny's. Six Common Sense Steps to Practical Healing. It's everything that we just talked about in depth, Mm -hmm. a deeper dive. The first part of the book is on adverse childhood experiences, trauma. And and it talks about you are not broken, and you never were broken, and you are perfectly made, and we're going to get you back right ship going where you need to be. The next part of the book is all each chapter, eat well, sleep well, move well, poop well, de-stress well, commune well. Has my six steps has a chapter dedicated to it, and at the end of the book, it, it is or at the end of each chapter are my Danny's Wild and Well prescription for for healing. I'm telling you, I think it's a phenomenal book. Now I've only had about 15 people read it right now because it's not out yet. November the ninth, it, it's worldwide. Uh, well, countrywide, maybe it's worldwide. I don't know. Um, they love it. I wrote this book for the. Com- at, for, of common sense medicine for the pr- practical, down-to-earth, basic lay person. The person in Gilbertsville, Kentucky, where I'm from, or Cambridge, Massachusetts, at, where Harvard is, that they could understand it and say, whoa, 
whoa, that's me. That's me. Gosh, I didn't know that eggs were number two food allergy for children, or I didn't know that I could actually poop every day. I mean, it's, I love it. I think it's a great book. It took me a year and a half to get written. I, it did get picked up by a publisher. I'm so thrilled about that, which because I was going to self-publish it, whether or not um, somebody picked it up or not, and we did. And now it's available on every everywhere you would buy your books, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Books a Million, everything is online. So I'm, I'm really excited about it. I hope it helps millions of men and women really, really regain the health and change the trajectory of their children's lifestyle and their children's I life. It, I hope it changes the trajectory of medicine because there's so many medical professionals and trauma professionals who don't know this stuff. No, you're right. Thank you. I, I Thank you for saying that. And um, a portion of all the proceeds from this book, if I ever make any money on it, but I will, I hope, um, go to the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. So everyone who orders the book, pre-orders it now, orders the book, buys the book in a bookstore, I hope to get this, or, um, at the end of the year or, you know, at the end of the first full year, you know, I will write a check to the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention because that 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 organization is near and dear to my heart. That's so, awesome. no, I hope it does. I've I've had several healthcare providers read it, um, and they were like, "Wow, this is." It's not written for a healthcare provider, but it's got three hundred and sixty something medical references in it. So, I tried mm. to make it to where a doctor who's going to poo-poo what I'm saying can turn right to the back of the book and say, "Well, yeah, she's got the study. Yeah, it does mm-hmm. say that." You know, we're practicing 20 years behind what the medicine, what the research yeah. shows, right? That's right. I agree. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So say, oh, gluten does not punch holes in your gut. Well, you know what? I got about 40 references back there. Now, you can find a reference for anything you want. I do understand that. But I got really good references on it. And so I, I appreciate you. Thank you for saying I hope it changes medicine. I, I do. I, yeah. <laughs> You know, I'm not getting any younger now at 65. I want this book to shoot straight to number one and just, I would love, and it's not about the money. I'm totally fine now. I just want so many people to benefit and know you don't have to settle for less than 150%. You don't have to. Your body's designed to be 150%, but you've got to give it what it needs. And if you have a healthcare provider who is not working with you, then find a new health care provider. If you have, because guess what? I work for you. If you don't like me, you've got the right to pull your records and go find a health care provider who actually is going to help you heal. And people don't realize that, Laura. It's the same yeah, as their I know. It is. Yeah, I for sure. Them, don't you dare stick with someone who's not holding your feet to the fire and helping you get better emotionally, physically, spiritually, sexually. You got me fired up over here. I mean, it's uh, uh, <laughs> so fire your health care provider. That's right. Find If they're telling you there's no difference in this and that and whatever and, you know, whatever, just eat less and exercise more, bullshit. I mean, that that's not a health care provider. That's somebody who's just handing out pills and it's just yeah. treating and treating people. We don't mm-hmm. have room for that. Mm-mm. So speaking so. of change of health care provider, do you um, – can people call you? Yes. Yes, they can. Now, we are booked out for about six months, so that's a problem for people. And COVID, during this past year, the phone lines picked up because I think people got caught off guard. Yes, they can work with me. Yes, they can come. I, but I also have so much free education out there. I don't know if you've looked at our you know, our YouTube channel, my Facebook and the, um, Instagram, literally every day I put out free health videos. Every day, seven days a week, something is free out there for people to learn. And I've, liter- I've got hundreds on our YouTube channel, but my Instagram is loaded with free. So if they can't afford to come or they can't come, I've got lots of education, as do so many people who do what I do. We love mm-hmm. to teach. And I love to teach, and that's my forte. When I'm finished with this, working all day, seeing patients and all that, my goal is to to find a university that will actually accept me because Vanderbilt wants nothing to do 
with what I do for a living. And that's sad. <laughs> that is so sad. It's really sad. And what I do every day would not be taught on the boards, right? I wasn't taught about any of this. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I'm going to teach to what the boards are teaching them, you know, or, or in order to pass your boards. But I beg for them to let me come in and at least teach some sort of class that even if they don't offer credit for it, I think people would love it. Yeah. And it would make people a better health care provider. Absolutely. So what is your website? DannyWilliamson.com. And we have a free little book on swapping out foods. If you're eating, say, tortilla, or, you know, tortilla chips, let me switch to this. And a little ebook. We have a newsletter that comes out every week. The website's got a lot of things on it. Um, and it also will point you to the private Facebook community I run, which has got about 11,000 people on it called Inside Out, Healing from Within. You can join that. You can follow my um business page, Danny Williamson Wellness, and you can start learning and you can ask questions. We really do try to answer and reach out to people. Um, it's almost impossible now, though. It's, it's, it's um, busy, but we, we, the website is great, and I have video after video after video on there, and we'll help you any way we can, but I just want people to know, like you tell, I'm sure, every day, you're not broken. Just you're not, and there's a way out of this. And if you woke up breathing this morning, then by gosh, you've been given another day on this earth. How blessed are we? Don't mm-hmm. waste it. Don't mm-hmm. waste it. Turn it around. If you felt good as a child, then I need you remembering back then what in the world, what happened. If you're 50 or 60 years old, it is never too late to turn this ship mm-hmm. around. It mm-hmm. may not happen in days but you're going to feel better real soon and then you're just going to keep one foot in front of the other awesome well thanks for joining us danny and thanks to all our listeners for tuning in i'd like to close with a sending gratitude to all of you the elements the ancestors and thanks for being here thanks for joining us for this edition of modern animism radio and we will see y'all next week ciao ciao